Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests. I'm going to put you on the spot immediately. Although this is a pop quiz, it should not be a very difficult one. Someone tell me who the gentleman pictured right here Sam is. Sam Cooke. Absolutely, Alexander. That is a young Sam Cooke. I was born by the river in a little tent. And just like the river, I've been running ever since. It's been a long time coming, but I know a change is going to come. Doesn't matter what generation you represent. I guarantee you that most of us, regardless of the generation that we represent, we know those famous words uttered by the legendary Sam Cooke. When he uttered those words, it was a time when there was a severe need for change, especially for people that looked like him. And it was very brave of him to utter those words in a song because, quite frankly, he risked his career to say some of the things that he said. And same thing with some other songs. But that song is hopeful in nature. He's not demanding anything. It's hopeful. And even before the 3 minutes and 15 seconds are up, he says that a change did come, if you listen to the lyrics of the song. But here's what I would like to implore us to do today. I would like to us to, for us to go one step further. Instead of being hopeful, I would like for us to think about being the change. To be the change. So when we look at this famous quote by another very famous individual, Mahatma Gandhi, he is very much known for this be the change you want to see in the world quote. And the reason I started with Sam Cooke's quote, or Sam Cooke's lyrics, is because I think that's a great starting point, right? You have to start somewhere, right? That one of the most famous quotes that I absolutely love, Les Brown says it all the time, is basically, you don't have to be great to get started, but you gotta start to be great. And I admire what Sam Cooke said, but I want tonight for us to think about the idea of being the change that we want to see in the world around us. So what does it look like to be the change that you want to see? I can speak for Woodrow, right? What does it look like for Renata? What does it look like for Mano? What does it look like for Shirley, Alexander, Josephine? What does it look like for you all? So let's take a look. Let, let's dive in. I think some of the things that we can do, and this is not all inclusive, right? But I think some of the things that we can do, I'm going to give you right now. One, we can implement the golden rule. Now, I think one of the things that we forget about the golden rule is that it's been around so long, were we aware that that was a scriptural principle? Show of hands if you knew that was a scriptural principle. Right, and, and if you didn't raise your hand, that's okay. A lot of people don't know that. It's been around so long, but that actually is from Matthew 7, 12. It actually was, these are the words of Christ. And he says, therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. Basically do unto others as what? as you would have them do unto you. I think that is incredible. It's incredibly simple, too. We have certain ways we like to be treated, right? We have certain ways we want our loved ones to be treated. Something happened today that really just, just struck a chord with me. I teach an eighth grade language and literature course. One of my students has a little brother who is in sixth grade at my school. He literally drives his big brother crazy. It's the funniest thing. You watch him every day. He's always doing something where his big brother is constantly getting after him. Well, there was a situation where somebody had some words, nothing too bad, but some words with his little brother. And instantly, instantly, it changed from, oh, he's so annoying to, hey, that's my little brother. Right? The point is this. We have a certain way we would like to see ourselves be treated, our loved ones be treated. So what if we put that same energy out in the world? The reaping and sowing principle is simple, right? You get back what you give. You get back what you give. So you, whatever you do, that's what you're going to get. 
right? So we can't expect to do certain things and be negative and expect to get positive back. It's just not the way it works, right? It's like working out, going to the gym, right? We all want to be in shape. We all want to look like the rock. But how many of us are going to put in the time that the rock puts in, right? But that's what it is. You're going to, you're going to give back what you give. So implementing and living by the golden rule. The second thing is respecting one another's humanity. I was teaching a discipline in the secondary classroom course, and I had something said to me that I promise you I will never forget. A gentleman raised his hand. And he said, one of the things that bothers me most, Mr. Samuel, is that we just walk by each other every day and we don't even acknowledge each other. He said, I say hi to every single person that I meet and that I walk by because I consider that to be acknowledging their humanity. And that has stuck with me forever. That has stuck with me forever. You and your time matter, right? That's what he was basically saying. I tell my students every day when we do things where we have to work together, when you're done working with that person, you come over, you look them in the eyes, and you shake their hand, and you say, thank you for your time. And they say, why do we do that? Because that person just gave you 45 seconds, two minutes, four minutes, they can never get back. So let's respect that. Let's respect that. Two of the words in our school that we press all the time is dignity and respect. Treat everybody with dignity and respect. If everyone was treated with dignity and respect, we wouldn't have a lot of the issues that we have if we just simply respected one another and gave everybody the dignity that is due a human being. Finally, living by, the dream, living by the Dr. Martin Luther King principle, which is injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Right? We live in this society that says basically, if it doesn't affect me, well, and that's a fact. We've had 255 mass shootings. How do you react when you see it in the news anymore? No judgment, just think about it though. How do we react? Have we become cold? Do we, does, you know, it's, eh, but it didn't really affect me, nobody I know, nobody I love. Well, the, re the reality is, is that we have to care about justice everywhere. So in conclusion, quickly, how can we, how can we be the change? Exercising the golden rule, respecting humanity, and living by Dr. King's principle. Thank you.